All right, everyone, welcome. Thank you for taking some time out of your day to listen on to today's webinar. I wanted to give a midweek update for the atmospheric river we're expecting this weekend, widespread precip expected. A lot of uncertainty. We'll dig into a lot of this as we go through the presentation. Um, if you have any questions throughout the presentation, feel free to drop a question into the questions box. We will go through and answer all questions at the end. My name is Dave Munyon. I'm a forecaster here at the National Weather Service in San Diego. Oh, you cannot see the presentation. Interesting. Can we see the presentation now? Okay, great, awesome. Without further ado, we will get going. So, some key points uh, to round off the beginning of the briefing today. There has been a notable shift in the timing and track of the main storm that's going to be bringing the, the rainfall this weekend. What we still are kind of on the, the mind of thinking right now is that heavier rainfall is now going to be expected Friday into Saturday rather than uh, Thursday into Friday, which is what we were talking about a couple of days ago. And this is a pretty drastic shift in, in some of the models, and we'll talk why that is here in a bit. But rainfall could be at heavy at times uh, throughout portions of Friday afternoon through much of the day on Saturday with about a 10 to 30 percent chance of thunderstorms mixed in with the rainfall Friday afternoon through Saturday as well. We could see some wraparound showers possible through Sunday afternoon, so maybe even some additional rainfall as we get into early next week. We were talking a, a little bit about some strong winds that are possible with this system a couple days ago. With the way that things have trended, won't really see as strong of winds. Could still see some breezy winds, especially over uh, some of the more vulnerable mountain passes and into the deserts, maybe 34, 40 miles an hour in some of those really vulnerable wind passes like the Cone Pass or Banning Pass, um, but not nearly as strong or as widespread as we were thinking a couple days ago. The other notable change is snow levels will be probably a little bit higher, closer to 95, maybe 10,000 feet uh, for much of the heavy rainfall, so probably a little bit less in the terms of snowfall. Current rainfall estimates, a lot of this is going to have to be taken with a grain of salt, folks. There's abnormally high amounts of uncertainty for only 24 to 72 hours out. Um, the system that we're dealing with, the pattern that's going on, it's a, a cutoff low as we call it, and these systems are very volatile and finicky and can any slight wobble in the, in the path of that low and where it tracks will dictate how much rainfall we can get and how long we could see precipitation last for. But at least right now the current thinking is about two to four inches of rainfall from whenever it wants to start, sometime Friday, Friday afternoon through Saturday and into Sunday. Uh, two to four inches of rain for the coast and valleys. Always going to get the most rainfall for the coastal mountain slopes, foothills up through the mountains. Two to locally six plus inches of rain up on the mountains. And even the deserts could get in on some pretty impressive rainfall, probably more so on Saturday. Um, but maybe three quarters to two inches of rain possible east of the mountains. So here is a look at our satellite. It might be a little jumpy on the broadcast, but that red L is kind of denoting the current location of our current system that we're expecting to slowly move east and probably dive southward over the off the California coast over the next couple of days, funneling funneled in with this low pressure system is a big tail of white clouds that's rich tropical moisture that's going to be kind of moving in and we'll be able to tap into some of that depending on that track the low that's going to bring us a lot of our rainfall over the, the weekend. So here's a, a general timeline graphic of what we're expecting Thursday evening and into the early overnight hours of Friday morning we'll see rainfall begin to spread into the area from northwest to southeast, probably only really light amounts uh, in that first initial period, Thursday night and Friday morning. Really looking at that Friday and Saturday period as the best chance for moderate to heavy rainfall. Unfortunately, this is that period of greatest uncertainty that we're looking at. Again, that exact path and that cutoff low will really dictate, you know, how much heavy rainfall could fall and, you know, whether all of it's going to be pushed towards 
late Friday into Saturday, how much will fall on Saturday, how much will fall on Friday. You know, again, a lot of that's still got to get sorted out over the next couple of days. Really, hopefully by maybe tomorrow, we'll have a better idea of whether Friday or Saturday is going to see how much rainfall. But still, the current belief is that Saturday is now the favored day for heaviest rainfall as opposed to Friday. Um, but we could still see moderate to heavy rainfall and that chance of thunderstorms on Friday as well. Everything will kind of wind down as we get into Saturday or into Sunday, um, but still, again, those wraparound showers are possible as the main, like, low of the storm can pass overhead. And then even as we get into next week, there looks to be another storm system, maybe Monday into Tuesday, that could bring some additional rainfall chances. So even after we get past this one, there could still be some additional rainfall chances as we get into next week. Um, and then on the right side here, we do have some... Uh, rough expected maximum hourly rainfall rates now it's not going to be raining at this intensity during you know most of those periods we're not going to see half an inch of hour half an inch of or, sorry half an inch in an hour across the urban areas all day that's just the highest possible hourly rates that we could get in any of those periods confidence is a little bit moderate on friday but much lower on saturday still kind of owing into that certainty that we don't really have a whole lot of it, and hopefully some of that will improve as we go through the next 24 hours or so. Here's a, a probabilistic look. This is the, the chance of 24-hour rainfall greater than a half an inch. This is kind of here to show that we have a pretty solid chance, about a 50-50 chance of at least half an inch of rain on both Friday and Sunday across a lot of different areas across our region. Saturday looks to be the, the best chance for getting half an inch of rain, closer to about 70 to 80 percent chance across the region. Now let's up that rainfall threshold. What is the chance of getting at least an inch of rain in a 24-hour period? Focusing on Friday, Saturday, Sunday here, still seeing Saturday as that more favored day to get heavier rainfall, the best shot for getting at least an inch of rain here from these probabilities. Now, rainfall rates, I mentioned that just a little bit ago on the, the timeline graphic. Still thinking that we could see rainfall rates reach maybe up to eight tenths or so per hour in some of those heavier pockets, especially along some of the coastal mountain slopes where, you know, you get that orographic effects. And, you know, we always like to say that that's our heaviest uh, rainfall areas on the mountain slopes. And again, a lot of this is going to be dependent on where those embedded thunderstorms occur and uh, those little convective pockets will bring the heaviest rainfall rates again closer to maybe eight tenths of an inch at the highest. Still lots of uncertainty, you know, nothing is set in stone and we'll have a lot more of an idea of what's going to happen over the next few days or at least into tomorrow and hopefully by Friday we'll know what's, what's in stake for Saturday. So here finally uh, we'll cover up with some actual forecast rainfall graphics. This is just going to be for Friday. More favored uh, in the more northwestern areas of our region, Orange County, portions of the Western Inland Empire, but we could still get uh, some pretty appreciable rainfall totals down in San Diego County, still under an inch in this forecast, um, but definitely uh, noteworthy precip all the way over through the, the coastal slopes of the mountains as well. Stepping forward to Saturday, this is still reinforcing the idea that Saturday is going to be our favorite day for the most amount of rainfall, anywhere from an inch and a half to uh, two, two and a half inches of rain just on Saturday alone. And then this last rainfall total graphic, this is pretty much the whole kit and caboodle from Friday night all the way through Sunday morning around noon on Sunday widespread inch and a half to two inches across some of the San Diego valleys and urban areas, higher totals, Orange County, and then also the coastal slopes as well. Locally, up to six inches of rain in some of the more favored spots on the coastal slopes when all is said and done. We'll reinforce the idea that there's a lot of uncertainty, a lot of moving parts and exactly where that storm tracks and how much rain we could get out of that. So. We'll probably be hosting another webinar tomorrow, and then uh, we'll always be uh, sending forecast updates as much as we can with the latest information and thoughts. Snow levels, uh, I talked about that uh, a bit 
at the top, um, probably staying a little bit higher than we talked about a couple days ago, closer to 10, 11,000 feet, um, maybe falling uh, down to 9 to 7,500 feet come Sunday. So maybe on the back end, we could see some flakes mix in on some of the lower elevations. Generally, most of the snowfall accumulations will be around those 10,000 or higher foot peaks, maybe 9,000 and up. Um, but otherwise, maybe as we end to Sunday, a little bit more snowfall, but really not a whole lot to worry about on that front. Um, looking ahead, there could be some uh, rain possible Monday, Tuesday from that secondary system. We'll have to see how that goes. We got another big storm ahead of that until then. But below normal temperatures will likely continue uh, into early next week. We'll see those temperatures continue to trend down this week. Um, and then we'll see that trend continue into early next week uh, as well, likely staying below average. And still, with all of these rainfall systems, we're definitely not looking at any Santa Ana wind events on the horizon. So probably uh, at least pushing back any fire concerns, especially if we get a lot of rainfall. And uh, just to recap uh, the key points again for anyone that might not have seen it all on top, again, a notable shift in timing and track of the main storm that remains an abnormally high amount of uncertainty only 24, 48 hours out from when some of the rainfall could begin. That's owing to just the finicky nature of the pattern with these cutoff lows that we're dealing with here. Um, so, you know, hopefully as we get the next couple of days or so, when we get more into the, the range of uh, our high-res guidance, hopefully tomorrow afternoon, maybe when we do another update, uh, we'll have a little bit more confidence on some rainfall rates. You know, I'm seeing a, a fair amount of questions about uh, some of our burn scars, and, and I'll answer those with the best I can uh, in just a minute here. Um, with that, that's going to be the end of the, the briefing. I will 